to, uh, I guess you could call this a review of my 2020 Ford Super Duty. Owned it for about a month and it's got a little under 700 miles on it. So they've redesigned the, the grill for 2020 to uh, increase airflow. It's a much more open grill. It's a little different aesthetic. Um, we've got the LED lights here, daytime running lights and of course uh, actual headlights as well. The hood design's the same as the 17s, 18s, and 19s. Um, so are the mirrors. Ordered mine with uh, the 18-inch factory rims. That way I could uh, replace them with some aftermarkets. We've got the uh, keyless entry up here now, like on the previous uh, models. Uh, body's still all aluminum. Um, we've gone to the uh, new style handles, not the, you know, the 2000 and one through 2016 style handles you expect from a Super Duty. Power deployable running boards. Um, interior is uh, this kind of rustic saddle color, um, but that's that's been on the 19s. King Ranch badging. The wood is real wood, not like a fake veneer. Real wood. We've got heated steering wheels now um well they've they've had those but it's new for me coming from a 15. um what else uh three three drivers memory packages instead of two that's new for me still got the telescoping trailer mirrors powerful mirrors all that kind of good stuff still got a little piece of plastic on here i haven't taken that off yet i might leave that on there it makes it feel brand new still Coming back to the back, I really like what they've done this. I don't know if this is how it was on the 17s, 18s, or 19s, but um, you can uh, you can completely fold this down here by flicking that handle and folding that in, and you've got one giant flat cargo area, and the seats just fold down without any kind of button for release, which is nice, and then they just very easily fold back up. The uh, cup holder for the back pops out of the front which I thought was kind of cool again new to me I don't know if that's like unique to 20s or not just uh, pointing out the things I noticed coming from a 15 we've got uh, a couple battery chargers back here 110 outlets 400 watt rear heated seat buttons air conditioning vents one thing I like is that the uh, the King Ranch mat is actually like removable so you can vacuum it or wash it or whatever it's not built into the floor that's kind of a cool feature. Um, they even thought nicely enough to uh, put this non-slip pad in here so uh, stuff doesn't go sliding all the way back and forth. And if that's not enough, you've got a little divider there which helps you uh, with further gear organization. Obviously, we've got the uh, third generation, 6.7 liter V8 power stroke turbo diesel. This year comes with a bigger turbocharger, higher pressure fuel system. Um, so that is new for 20. Ultra low sulfur diesel, obviously. And you got your DEF here, not to be uh, confused or mixed with each other. I've added a better built toolbox. That's obviously not factory. But um, one of the cool things is, is you can drop the bed on the remote now. Hydraulic dropping bed. It doesn't go up by itself. Of course, we've got our tailgate step. And... Um, this isn't new to 20s, but coming from 15, they've redesigned it so that the handle isn't up here in the way. It's flush inside of there now. That's nice. Um, that way you can still like put forklifts, loads of stuff in the back without ripping your tailgate off. They've got these nifty uh, LED lights in the bed now. They power up. Here's the button with this button here. It'll be hard to see during the day, but that's actually a really handy feature. And it turns the uh, the cab lights on on the roof as well so you can really see in the bed at night and you don't have to have the truck powered on for that button to work so that's that's pretty handy um, and with a little bit shorter toolbox so I could still get stuff underneath it um, a six and three quarter foot bed is already on the short side I don't need an eight but I want to maximize what bed space I do have they've changed the tailgate this is new for 20 the Ford emblem used to be real big in the middle and it sits super duty real small they want to market the difference between Super Duty and half tons, especially uh, now that they're sharing the cab. 
Um, so they've put Super Duty here real big on the back, and the forward emblem's slightly smaller. They've moved the King Ranch emblem down instead of being here in the middle. Um, oh, someone wants to talk. We can answer that later. I've got my B&W hitch on there. It's two and a half inch size, so I took the sleeve out. Um, 15,000 pounds of standard conventional hitch towing. What else? What else? What else? Uh, it's got the Bliss sensors in it, blind spot indicators. Um, that's pretty much it for the for the outside of the truck. Sorry, it's a little, little dirty, uh, but it rained last night. I ordered mine with the FX4 package, so it's got the uh, skid plates from the factory. Someone really wants to talk to me. So obviously the truck is locked. Now one cool feature is if you've got your hands full, the keys are in your pocket. As long as the keys are close to the vehicle, you can unlock the truck just by being close to it, pulling on the back of the handle. Likewise, to lock it, you just touch the outside button, and then it's locked, unless you touch the inside of the handle. And if you don't have your keys with you, that's when the uh, keypad comes in handy, which is obviously pretty cool. So, take a step inside and look at some of the interior features here. So obviously the uh, King Ranch trim level is going to come with remote start, but if you're inside the truck, you can use the push button. Pushing it once without your foot on the brake turns the accessory on. Putting your foot on the brake and pushing it turns the truck on. So I will run you through the uh, menu here. So the biggest difference I know from my 15 is that right there, average fuel economy. This is about 50% highway, 50% city. On my old truck, that would have said about anywhere from 11.7 to 12.3. So that is pretty cool. New truck has 1,050 foot-pounds of torque, which is an upgrade uh, from, I think, the previous year model of 935, which is more than my old 15 at 880, 860. 860 or 880, one of those two. So... Over here on the left, we have my view, which is your customizable thing. You can put basically your favorite um, menus here. So they're more quickly accessible than going to their pre-programmed submenu. So on a trip, you have trip one, trip two, average, fuel history, and a compass. And you have your truck info. This is where you got transmission temp, diesel exhaust fluid level, tire pressure, speedometer, engine hours, oil temperature, engine idle hours as well, tranny temp displayed as an actual number, and your maintenance monitor with submenus, air filter, it's okay, uh, oil life 87%, diesel exhaust fluid gauge, this is a more detailed gauge that estimates your range, 9500 miles is actually pretty substantial. And again, your tire pressure monitor. Towing status, we don't have a trailer hooked up, but uh, there you go. No active trailer, no active trailer, so it's kind of hard to uh, depict this. Off-road, just gives you the angle of your vehicle and such, like the old one. And settings, this is where you uh, pick your settings. Turn features on and off, and this is how you uh, select which gauge is in the top right. Corner, I have turbo pressure because I can access the other two from the sub menus. So that is the rundown there. Okay, if uh, we put it here in uh, a gear, oh, got to be in drive. Aha, now you'll notice one of the biggest changes for 2020 10 speed transmission. We'll go more into that on our drive, but it is awesome. It has drive modes which you can change with the drive mode button here. They are normal, tow haul, eco, slippery, which actually makes a difference in wet weather, and deep snow sand, four wheel drive recommended for that mode. Um, I've used normal, eco, and slippery so far. I don't really notice much of a difference between normal and eco, but I'm assuming it just changes like subtleties, um, shift firmness, uh, injection maybe in the engine. I'm not real sure. I don't work for Ford. I'm just uh, hypothesizing here. 
but um, hopefully it actually does something and it's not a placebo. I know that the slippery when wet does something, or <laughs> not slippery when wet, the slippery mode does something. Um, it uh, it changes the way the, the traction control responds. Um, okay, here we go. We have the home, the home menu here. I am not endorsing any particular song. That's just what's on my phone here. You can do the sub-menus. We uh, have audio. And, of course, sources include AM, FM, Sirius, Bluetooth, and Pandora, if you have Pandora. Climate looks... I'll put it in drive so I don't have to hold the brake. Climate looks like this. Um, pretty standard. I haven't actually pressed menu. Let's see what that does. Okay. Here's where you can turn your heated steering wheel on. That's a new feature for me coming from a 15, and it works really well. I really like that. You can also access that from down here on the home menu. Okay, um, phone is just phone. This is kind of cool. Uh, you know, you can read text messages. I haven't figured out how to hook this up. Does not have access. Check your phone. I checked my phone, but uh, it, there's I don't see an option, so I'm gonna have to call for it on that one. Uh, nav is just your full screen navigation menu. If you sit in your truck for too long without putting it in in a gear. Uh, or if you put it back in park after it's been in a gear and you sit in it for a while, if the engine temp isn't warm enough, it will idle up to bring the temperatures up uh, so that they're more appropriate for driving in. So like I said, it doesn't do it right away, but uh, if, you, if it sits in park with the engine on for long enough and the temperatures are too low, it will idle up. I guess that's kind of cool. It'd be more helpful in cold weather, which we don't get a lot of in Texas. Got your garage door opener. I think they call that Homelink or like Universal Garage Door or something. Six upfitter switches now located up here on the top, um, as opposed to uh, down here, like my my uh, 15. Ventilated and heated seats, uh, dual zone temperature control. That's all pretty standard. Not a lot of that has changed. Back up here, this is your power sliding rear window. have lights one or both here this is a cool feature press this when you open the door the lights don't come on which is uh, kind of neat uh, here is your panoramic moon shade or moon roof shade press it once it retracts halfway press it twice full length of the roof And this is your actual roof. It only goes halfway. Here we have a, a real wood cover of our wireless charging mat and USB port, which is cool. There's also a USB-C port in here. And here is the I don't know how to back up a trailer, trailer backup control. Too high, four high, four low for diff lock that's all pretty standard uh, over the last few years we've got our inside our glove box or not uh, this what is this center console this is in the glove box center console that hasn't really changed this is cool it slides over so you can make four cup holders or two cup holders in a tray here's something not a lot of people know about if you take this tray out and then take this little mat out <gasps> Look at that, there's a place for your key fob, which I don't know why anyone would actually use. It's just asking to have your truck stolen and then not have it claimed on insurance because they will fight you for being an idiot. Uh, what else do we have? Oh yeah, so we've got a camera system now here, which is kind of neat. Press this. So we're looking at the front of my truck and a side view, which um, is com composed of different uh, cameras around the truck. One of them is this little drop-down thing on the bottom of the mirror. There's a lens in there. We can switch our camera view. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong button. By doing this, this is just front only. This is a composite of the front. The bed for hooking up goosenecks. And this is accessory cameras, which you can uh, hook up via Bluetooth, I am pretty sure. For like uh, you can put one on the back of your trailer and then wirelessly connect it 
an exhaust brake, traction control, hazards, hill descent control, lane keeping, lane keeping assist on and off. Um, trailer brake gain. Of course, I don't have a trailer. So the only options I didn't order on this truck were the uh, the adaptive cruise control because I don't use cruise control in in uh, traffic anyway. But it does have the um, the pre-charge pre-collision assist uh, braking system, and uh, I did not order the um, what do they call it the the steering system the uh, like adaptive. Dy dynamic steering or whatever they call it. I test drove one with dynamic steering and I found um, so what, basically what they did was so you didn't have to turn the wheel as much at a low speed to get the tires to turn they increased with the hydraulic pump the ratio of the steering system but it, it, it's like going to a higher gear on a bike when you do that it's it's harder to turn the wheel so i'd rather turn the wheel more but be able to turn it with one finger than have to like really strain to turn the wheel so i didn't get that option but otherwise it, it has every option so um, this opens and it's like a little mini glove box and then the actual glove box is down here with your owner's manual slot up there. Oh, almost forgot. The seats massage, which is pretty cool. Front, uh, front two seats only, but still a neat feature. And, and believe it or not, it's um, it's uh, less of a novelty than I expected. It's actually uh, pretty comfortable. So, all right. Um, oh, okay. Here you go, Ford. My first complaint. It has auto rain sensing wipers, but. Um, they don't seem to be working right. Um, apparently, as you with with the auto wiper feature checked in your settings on your on your center menu here, um, when it's when they're when you move the knob forward, it's supposed to adjust the sensitivity of the auto wipers. So when it was raining the other day, I had it all the way forward, and the water was building up on the windshield to the point where I couldn't see. Um, and the wipers still weren't wiping. So I turned that feature off, put it back in old school mode. So they're gonna look at that during my first oil change. But that's been the only issue I've had so far. So we'll take it for a drive and, uh, and we'll see what you guys think. In reverse, we have the traditional reverse camera, but also it has this 360 uh, feature here, which is kind of cool for getting uh, into and out of parking spots. But you should always still use your mirror and visually check your surroundings. So one of my first observations about driving this truck is factory to factory, um, the, the suspension is a lot more comfortable than uh, my 15. Um, it's real soft. This is a pretty rough bridge right here going over a little creek and you hardly even felt, um, felt that it needed some concrete repairs. So that's nice. Very, very comfortable. Don't need to uh, really replace any of, the, any of the shocks or stuff like I did on my old truck. My old one, I put the Bilsteins on there. Um, this one's fine like it is, in my opinion. Uh, something else, again, that goes back to the 10-speed transmission. Uh, here we are doing 25 through my neighborhood, and it's in fifth. If I get it up to about 28, it'll shift. Let's see here. Yeah, there's 28, and now it's in sixth. Um, if you're accelerating um, fairly aggressively, the transmission will actually skip gears, so it doesn't necessarily go you know, first, second, third, fourth. It might go like first to third, which is kind of cool. Um, it's smart that way. Uh, it's also a really quiet cab. Like everything's built really solid. There's no squeaks, creaks, any of that, and you can barely even hear the engine running. You get a little bit of turbo noise, but I like that. It's a diesel after all. Okay, so I'm going to do a like a 30 roll acceleration to show y'all. This truck is fast from the factory. So I'm going to put it in, hold on, we'll see here. We are in fifth, going 30, and here we go. Now we're already at 65. So it's an 8,000 pound truck. That was fifth gear, so that wasn't even one of the low gears, it was a mid gear. And it was plenty fast for how much it weighs and no aftermarket tuning or off-road uh, sorts of performance features. 
So over here are a couple more features I haven't shown y'all yet. So here's our headlight uh, mode selector. I leave it in auto. If you put it in manual, you can come up to the top here and turn lights in the tips of the mirrors on to illuminate uh, out to the sides of the truck, which is nice, but it doesn't work in auto. You gotta go manual first. This is the rear bed lamp, fog lamps. This is your speedometer brightness. You can drop the tailgate from here. You think you probably heard it release in the back. And this is your pedals, steering wheel settings, seat settings, King Ranch emblem. This truck is blue jeans metallic with the, uh, I think they call it stone gray bottom, but it still looks tan to me. And as you can see, the tailgate release worked. You can also drop it, touch of a, uh, touch of a button there. Hook our head in under the hood real quick, and that'll be the end of the tour, ladies and gentlemen. Any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'd be happy to tell you how I like it in detail, but my overall assessment is definitely a worthy upgrade from my 15, which was an already awesome truck.